this is something that I think uh, we should all know about. Uh, so, I recently was looking up the Nintendo Switch firmware, and uh, the latest firmware at least, and it seems that 19.0.0 breaks compatibility with Atmosphere. Now, if you've accidentally updated your firmware to this, um, looks like you're probably out of luck until the next few days when uh, Atmosphere probably releases a new up or update with along with Hakate. And, um, yeah, it seems that, uh, the brand new system, it says here, the, a brand new system software update has been released. Nintendo has just put out a milestone firmware release for the Nintendo Switch, bringing OFW to 19.0.0. Despite the version number, it seems that the new update is purely focused on stability, meaning Nintendo wants to actually break the firmwares that are on CFW, such as Atmosphere in this case. Now, of course, that means support for custom firmware atmosphere has been broken for now until Sirius M planning on fixing things in the next few days. Well, one thing I will say is that if it's not updated on the atmosphere, don't update your Nintendo Switch. If you update your Nintendo Switch and it's modded, um, I wouldn't say there's a lot of good luck coming from this. However, uh, if you do happen to... Um, uh, accidentally not, uh, if you accidentally update on official firmware from, like, um, the, uh, actual Switch's firm, uh, official w OFW itself, uh, chances are likely your Switch won't be able to be modded unless it's downgraded or if it's, uh, or, or which can only be happened on custom firmware, of course, but, uh, the main takeaway from this is that Nintendo is trying to stop firmware, uh, updates on this Switch. Now, one thing I will say is, how do you jailbreak a Switch? Um, very touchy, but I'll get into it. Okay, well, one thing, um, uh, so one thing I want to break down is this uh, video, uh, before we get started, is for educational purposes, and you should not follow uh, this guide if you're willing to not mod your Switch. Because uh, modding your Switch, it does come with risks, but you might want to know them before you actually uh, also mainly know how Nintendo operates before you uh, function one of these things modded. So uh, that's a little disclaimer there. Now, now, without further ado, let's get straight into the video of how to mod your Nintendo Switch. So a few things you're going to need, actually. Uh, let me get this out so I can actually showcase to you guys what you're going to need. So you're going to need a micro SD card with uh, at least 120 gigs recommended. You're going to need an RCM jig, uh, which actually, there's three ways of modding your Switch with uh, metal these days. Mainly metal is the way to work it, but uh, an RCM jig does the best job. Now, if you don't have one of these, uh, there's actually uh, two other options, which are not the best. And I don't recommend it unless you're trying to do it right now as like a temporary solution. But... Besides an RCM jig, you can also do it with a paper clip or tin foil. But the RCM jig, I recommend getting for like three, ten, four bucks or something like that. It's all a little bit higher, but eh, these things uh, work every time, from what I know. You're also gonna need a, a switch that a compatible switch V1, which is not patched. Uh, if your switch is patched or possibly patched, you can uh, check your serial number uh, on the. Um, uh, is my switchpatch.com website. I'll have links for that in there in the description below. Also, you're gonna need a. Um, uh, this isn't really what you need, but this is for show. Like this, you're gonna need a cable that is like USB Type C to A or however you can connect your switch to the uh, uh, your PC. And you're also gonna need some downloads set up. So let me get started with that real quick. Um. I just put this back in my switch. By the way, if you find this video any value, uh, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and uh, we'll uh, uh, keep the channel going for as long as we can. And uh, if you want to see more, let me know. All right. Without further ado, let's get to some downloads. A few things you're gonna need is, um, hang on, let me look it up real quick. Um, Tegra RCM GUI. So first thing you're gonna need, <laughs> okay, uh, is Tegra RCM GUI. This can be found on a GitHub page. 
There's two versions actually, the installer or the portable version. The portable is like you could just put it on a folder or a, a, a external drive and it'll work that way. The installer just installs it to your computer. So in my recommendation would be the portable version because um, you basically get to run it in any way or anywhere I should say. Uh, and then basically you want to, uh, once you install TechRC MGUI, you're going to want to make sure that auto inject is on if you want to and run app at Windows Startup. That just makes it to where you're just going to, it'll load as soon as your PC boots up. And then you want to install the drivers, which I highly recommend doing as well. Uh, MMC, uh, that goes on SD card. And you want to make sure that you get Hakate before doing this. And also some other downloads. I'll leave links to that as well. Uh, anyways. Now the rest of the thing is you're going to go to uh, Hakate. And you're going to want to make sure you get the latest version. Now apparently uh, it says actually 6.2.2 just released. So Hakate's hardware OS version has 19.0.0 support. I just wanted to make sure that uh, that worked before I actually meant, went and done something like this. Now, if you have a, a 19.0.0 switch, it's recommended that you get this version right here. Now, apparently, uh, there has been... Uh, I want to make sure that uh, this worked before I actually get it. Because Hakate, for whatever reason, didn't work on 19.0.0. So I want to make sure that uh, this was actually here and updated and matured as well. But I'll leave links to it so you guys can see how it works. And if it doesn't work, then you could just downgrade it as soon as you can. And like if, if you have a jailbroken switch in the first place. Now, of course, in order to downgrade your firmware, you're going to need a mod switch. That's just how life works. If you're on the official firmware and you accidentally update, you're probably going to likely want the latest version. So that's that's just what my assumption is, knowing from how hard uh, custom firmware it's, it works. <sighs> Next, you're going to need a few other things. You're going to need to go to a JITS website or an AO, uh, AOI. Or I, AIO? Yeah, AIO. Um... JITS custom firmware switch. Just insert the stuff. All right. So basically, this uh, you're gonna need uh, the SIG patches, but uh, however, SIG patches also comply with the the update of the firmware. And by I mean firmware, I mean custom firmware. So if you want to make sure that's up to date, um, make sure you get the Hakate. And I think the Hakate comes with a bootloader as well. Let me check that real quick. Yeah, bootloader and Hakate not banned. So these ones, you want just the bootloader and you want to put the Hakate not banned wherever you're going to use Tegra RCM GUI on. I mean, honestly, <laughs> I recommend Atmosphere because it's a lot more uh, secu like secure and safe with custom firmware developing. Now, of course, this is a pre-release, so as I said before, things might not work. So it's not really matured yet, but you can get it right here. So it says Atmosphere 18.1, pre-release with the homebrew menu 3.6.0, and Fuji.bin, which you'll need to run the payload which is a payload uh, that runs on the RCM mode when you go into the switch's safe mode. Also forgot to say this, but make sure your config files are set up as well. Atmosphere basically itself is uh, essentially just the files, you, probably some of the files you'll need, such as the switch files, which is what you're going to put your homebrew apps in, and the Atmosphere folder, which is basically what runs as the CFW. Also, Homebrew NRO, I recommend putting that, leaving that in the root of the SD card. Uh, let, me, let me check my SD card layout, so let's, and we can get started there. You're also going to make sure you have the SIG patches as well, otherwise it won't run. 
Uh, you'll get errors when you don't have the SIG patches. And if you're doing an MUNFC, definitely recommend the uh, SIG patches. You're gonna, in order to get your uh, your SD card in your Switch, you're gonna have to actually uh, put uh, get an adapter or something. Uh, I recommend the old Sandisk one. Uh, Sandisk, yeah. Uh, let's see. Let's get that in there. I'm, now my stuff's already preset, so I'm just gonna show you what you're gonna need, basically. Also, make sure your SD card is formatted to FAT32. If it's not FAT32, you can use GUI format and partition it that way. Partitioning, basically, on the SD card is the same as formatting it. It doesn't matter if you do it on the Switch or not, because if you're already setting up the files as FAT32, you don't need to partition. But, for the sake, you're going to need an uh, Android Atmosphere folder, not Android, uh, a bootloader. Um, some of the stuff might be from just be emulating the Wii, so bear in mind that's not important. Then you're also going to need the MUMMC, which you'll generate once you create one. Um... If you're planning to downgrade, I recommend getting your firmware files. These are typically just like a bunch of uh, NCA formats. Okay. And then you're also going to need, um, if you want to actually keep your photos, I recommend keeping not deleting the Nintendo folder because, um, well, that's <laughs> probably the best. And then on this and the Switch folder as well. Uh, the switch folder is basically where you put your uh, your files on, like your home graphs on your switch. Now, of course, switch root is uh, that's just for Android setup. Uh, it's not needed. Now, of course, the uh, files excess files you're gonna need the homebrew menu NRO on your uh, uh, what is it? Your uh, root of the SD card. You're gonna need Fuji .bin in there as well. In the bootloader folder. You're going to want to make sure that you have the update.bin, the SIG patches, which is the patches, the NYX, and the Hecate IPL. Um, then once you go into payloads, make sure to also make sure, I think you have to make sure the Fuji.bin is actually in uh, here, because I think that's what detected it. Same with Tegra Explorer.bin, which is just a file explorer. Now, you want to make sure that you take the Fuji.bin. I'm guessing this is how you do it correctly. You want to put it in the payloads from in folder in the bootloader folder. Also, if you want to have other like uh, INIs uh, which to load your switch from, uh, Hakate IPL. <laughs> That's just a server. Don't mind that. Um, so what this does is when uh, the, the values that are like. Uh, uh, to determine what uh, uh, is actually enabled. Now I have stock firmware enabled, but uh, I don't. I don't have like uh, a file uh, the files from stock system firmware because um, now when you have this, this is basically just telling you what files are enabled, what stuff is enabled through it to connect to the Nintendo servers. You want to make sure that you have the NUMMC at one. Because if you have it at zero, it's going to be able to connect to Nintendo servers over and over again. And that's not something you want with an MEMFC, especially if you're trying to do something a little bit extra with it. Now, to leave that out of the way, um, oh, no. You go to uh, your sys uh, folder and make sure everything's aligned there. I don't know if you have to. They probably just puts in there for you. But the atmosphere folder is where things are different. So you see that says reboot the payload.bin. That's going to be a, uh, a payload thing in the, uh, the Switch uh, homebrew menu. Now, of course, they already put that in there for you in case you want to, like, restart or something. But personally, you're, it's recommended that you start with the reboot payload.bin if you want to just get a fresh restart on a console on custom firmware instead of just restarting with the uh, with the actual switch uh, menu, but let's get into if once you got everything set up, 
Uh, I believe you don't need to actually set up Android unless you want to. Uh, that's just the switch root folder is just so it, it basically detects the switch root files I have for like loading up Android or something. But let's get into how do you use the switch to uh, load into RCM. So what you want to do is you want to you know, take note of the right Joy-Con rail. You're going to want to uh, take out your Joy-Con. Now there's three methods of doing this. Tinfoil, paperclip, or an RCM jig like I recommend. Um, you want to put that all the way in the right uh, bottom back, bottom of the right Joy-Con rail. Make sure it's fully in there. And then you want to get a cable like this uh, that is USB type C to C or C to A. Now you put that in there and what I would recommend doing in Tegra RCM, you make sure the Hakate uh, folder is actually in the uh, thing. You can check that by clicking this and it will allow you to select the payload. But I'm not going to do that because I already got it on there. Now... Everything, if everything else is aligned up, you got your drivers installed, and you can auto inject. I would just, I'm gonna turn off auto inject so you can see what I'm doing here. So, once you uh, put, once you press power and vol, and plus and volume after that, when plugging in your switch, it'll say RCM OK. Now you press volume plus and power. And it should boot into RCM mode. Uh, usually, I think it would say RCM OK if um, it's already in RCM mode. Now you can press Inject Payload. Oh wait, I forgot. I don't have my uh, my my, my uh, switch didn't have the SD card, so I had to actually change something. It'll give you a check. Now just go ahead and press Volume Plus and Power. And make sure that when you do that, you inject the payload. And it boots in the Hakate. And, of course, um, this is what you would see at first. So, uh, bear in mind. Now, what you want to do is if you want to create one, which I highly recommend doing if you want to do a little extra on an MEMMC, is you create an MEMMC and create one in this menu. I'm not going to do that because I already got what mine done there. You can take out the RCM jig now because you got, you're got you not going to need it for a little bit unless you accidentally had auto boot on RCM mode off. Now, in order to make sure that we don't need the RCM jig again, let me show you how to do that. So if you go to Tools and you press Page 2, it'll say RCM mode, auto RCM mode on. Um... This makes it to where you can just press, you can enter RCM without pressing volume plus and home. But apparently now you just need to press, which is basically just power and it's uh, code name, I guess. I don't know why it says home. But, and a jig. It can restore all versions of RCM whenever requested. And this corrupts the Bluetooth uh, files in your uh, Switch controllers, apparently. Which, apparently, if you don't know, if you set up Android, you have to use the controllers you're par par paired with on official firmware. Uh, this, is, uh, this can corrupt it, but if you can't boot without a custom bootloader, though. Now, this is why we need the bootloader folder. Because and properly set it up as well. Now remember, if you don't see this screen, it's likely because you're either on too late of a version that doesn't you're on a version that doesn't support it, or your switch is patched. However, if you're not playing and making I'll still okay, so if you're not making an MEMC, you don't need to do this because um, the SD partitions basically uh, what it does is if you click on it, it'll show you like uh, certain stuff. So, the MMMC, you want to make sure that you have, for this, you want to make sure that you have all the way to 29 gigs full. That's important. Remember that. If you don't have the MMMC it, uh, it partitioned, um, likely is that the MMMC won't work. Now, reason for this being why I'm skipping this part is because I already have my stuff on there, so we don't need to do that. Then, once you go into your MMMC, you can create one, and it'll be work just fine afterwards. Once you do that, and you got all that set, head to Payloads, and go to Fuzi.bin.
basically uh, booting into the atmosphere through full uh, atmosphere stuff that we basically set up earlier. Now you can verify that your switch is homebrewed by going into the album and seeing whether it boots up or not. Or you can go into settings and scroll all the way down the system. Now if you see something that says AMS 1.7.1 or whatever firmware version your atmosphere is on, Congratulations, you now have a jailbroken switch. Uh, things you should not do on a jailbroken switch. Well, I'm going to tell you right now. One thing is do not play online with cheats. Now, I, of course, when it comes to like system NAND or something like that with the custom firmware CFW on Nintendo servers, you don't want to play on pirated games online. You don't want to play with cheats online. And you don't want to actually modify those uh, those game files unless you're planning to um, use an MUMC. Now, of course, an MUMC, what this does is since we've uh, you want to actually avoid a game connections and you no know, servers because remember, I ha there's a reason why I have 90 DNS also in the description so you can play online safely. Now, before you act if you didn't have this beforehand. I would, my, my suggestion would be to turn on airplane mode and make sure that it does not connect to the internet until you've done it successfully. And once you do that, 90DNS setter, what it does is it blocks Nintendo servers through this application. And then once you do that, you can test to verify its authenticity with 90DNS testing utility. Now, some other homebrew apps you can do, which is Daybreak, which is used to update your firmware offline and downgrade it, too, I think. Uh, I think that works, too. Because, remember, when I said you could, you have to downgrade your Switch to a specific version, well, that's if you want more matured firmwares. And Daybreak comes in handy for that. Um, now, of course, I can go all around my freaking thing. Where I'm just talking about homebrew apps, but let's get into what you shouldn't do uh, on the Nintendo Switch as well as like miscellaneous things. Um, if you're going to use a system NAN for the CFW, my suggestion would be don't do what I'm doing with a Switch. That's all I'm gonna say because some of the stuff um, I don't actually need to actually tell you why I don't own the games. <laughs> uh, I mean, technically, Mario Kart 8, I, I dumped on an NSP from my cartridge, so that one's fine. But, uh, here's the thing, though. Uh, because I didn't have any other games on my actual Switch, which is, by the way, right here, um, I had to actually jailbreak it just so I could play games, like, for freedom and stuff like that. But I don't play it online. That's, that's, that's not good. Because otherwise, you're sending information to Nintendo, and they can set up and get these telemetry logs to ban your console or your account or both in general. Most of the time, Nintendo will send data, uh, or not send data, and send and receive data just so they can get telemetry logs to ban mostly your account and console. But sometimes it's just a console. I would highly recommend if you do ever. Uh, not uh, uh, if you do ever get in a situation where you're trying to set, you're actually sending Nintendo servers data or something like that, well, uh, don't with an MMC. I'm going to be honest with you on that. Now, of course, there's other things you don't want to do, which will connect Nintendo servers. One, you don't want to update your system firmware from the system settings because that also connects Nintendo servers. And you also don't want to access the eShop or Nintendo Switch Online services. Mainly because these are tied to a server, uh, mainly Nintendo servers. And Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, also you don't want to go online with that with CM CFW on uh, EMC, EUMMC. And also, same with the Nintendo Switch Entertainment emulators that Nintendo implemented. Now, Tinfoil, this is how I actually got my uh, stuff on there. So, one thing I will say is uh, Tinfoil allows you to back up your games legally, of course. But I'm, I'm not responsible for any like files that you download off of torrent websites, as that is illegal. And I'm not going to disclose that either way. Now, of course... 
Um, what you can do with a Nintendo Switch that's jailbroken is you can actually play emulators from different console generations. You could run uh, Linux and Android, I guess, if you backed it and if you did the files correctly. Uh, I'll have that. I'll save that for a different video. But what you also want to do is, uh, if you also have a jailbroken Switch, do not update your firmware to the latest all the time because that's just uh, that's another issue that people seem to have on the homebrew community. Um, not sure if my camera was focusing on that, but yeah, this is a this is a kind of a thing that I've just had a lot of experience with, and that's why I wanted to mod my own switch in personal. But of course, um, what you actually end up doing is you're also when what an MMMC does is it makes a complete backup of your switch. Like and also a clean backup of your switch. Sorry if I had the camera down like that. Um, I was just uh, I wasn't paying attention to uh, my camera at the time, so uh, hopefully that footage went down great. But what you want to do? So now that I've got that set up, uh, you, you and hopefully you guys as well. Uh, this is what it would look like when you go into the homebrew menu. Yeah, so just in case, like, and also Apple mode, you can uh, also bypass that if you're having issues with certain issues with certain apps. So if you're having issues with a certain app on uh, the Homebrew channel or Homebrew app uh, store, you can just hold the right bumper and then load into a game that you made, or load into any game that actually works on the Nintendo Switch, I should say. So and then that whole uh, app mode thing will go away. Now, is it the most interesting thing that uh, to mod a Switch? Well, it's definitely the most mod friendly. I mean, a lot of, and a lot of things seem to work with it very well. I will say that the modding uh, history with Nintendo wasn't the greatest, but it was the most fun we've had. But anyways, guys, that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you thought in the comments below if you're playing to mod your Nintendo Switch or not, and if you are able to, um. Let me know what your thoughts were. If you, even if you didn't if, if weren't able to mod your switch in this video, I still recommend uh, if you given if you found this video value or found it interesting, leave a like and subscribe. It really helps a lot. Also, uh, I'll, I appreciate you guys being here and thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Peace out. Bye.